Have you ever wondered how plants, unlike us, keep reshaping themselves all their lives? A tree can grow new leaf every season. They can heal wounds. Look at this cut on this tree after 10 years. They can even sprout roots from a cutting. How do they pull this off? The answer lies in a series of fascinating processes, namely differentiation, de-differentiation and re-differentiation. Let's look at them in detail in this video. Development in plants is a journey from seed to a mature organism. It includes growth, which is usually increase in size, and differentiation, where the cells uh, become specialized in a certain function. Since plants cannot move, their survival depends on this ability to constantly reshape themselves by growing new organs, producing roots, stems, and leaves whenever needed. This plasticity of the plant development is the foundation of their resilience. In a previous video, we have looked at the different types of tissues in plants. So to start with, plants have undifferentiated tissue called as meristematic tissue. These are the stem cells. So they do not have any function. You can make them do any sort of function that you want to. So the process by which these meristematic cells obtain specific function is called as differentiation. Once they specialize, these cells are called as the differentiated or permanent cells. So here, this protoderm, procambium on ground meristems are all meristematic tissues and these originate from the apical meristems, meaning the stem cells that are found either in the root tip or in the shoot tip. After differentiation, they form cells which are useful in protection, transport and form the general body of the plant. Another example is how the tracheary elements are formed within the vascular bundles. So vascular tissues come from procambial cells and all of the vascular cells come from them. So they also give rise to xylem parenchyma, xylem fibers, etc. Some of the procambial cells undergo elongation and then they develop secondary cell wall which is made up of lignin and cellulose. Uh, these walls are very strong and elastic. And after that, they get rid of their protoplasm. There is an automated process where they undergo cell death and all the living parts of the cell are lost. Finally, they give rise to the mature tracheary elements. This sort of structure formation ensures that they are able to carry water to long distances, even under extreme tension. Differentiated cells usually lose the power to divide. But in plants, there is a twist. Some of these living differentiated cells can regain the ability to divide under certain conditions. And this is seen especially during secondary growth in plants. Let us look at an example. Once plants are matured and they want to undergo secondary growth, lateral meristems help them to do so. Because they give rise to specific meristems called as the secondary meristems. One such secondary meristem is the vascular cambium. So this is a look at the vascular bundles in our dicot stem. So we have our primary xylem and primary phloem and in between them we have the cambial tissue. The cambial tissue in between the xylem and phloem is called as the fascicular cambium and those in between two bundles are called as the interfascicular cambium and together they form the vascular cambium. A vascular cambium is formed when the parenchyma cells that are present in between the xylem and phloem regain the ability to divide. This is the process of de-differentiation. So what this means is that the cells have regained the ability to divide. Similarly, if you look towards the edge, we have the epidermis and the cortex. The parenchyma cells which are present near the cortex undergo de-differentiation to form cambium or phallogen. Basically, it means that the differentiated cells have somehow regained their meristematic activity. So the cells that are produced by de-differentiated meristems now have to have specialized function again, right? Because right now they have lost the function that they initially had and now they have to acquire a new function. This process is called as re-differentiation. So what happens is that from the vascular cambium, you get the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem. Similarly, from the cork cambium, you have a phelum or cork which goes towards the outside and um, phelloderm or the secondary cortex which uh, grows towards the inside. Together, all these layers are called as the periderm. 
So the process goes something like differentiation, de-differentiation, and then finally re-differentiation. Plant differentiation is said to be open. You know why? It's because the same meristem can mature differently depending upon the location on the plant. So what do I mean by this? So there are meristems on the root tip, right? Apical meristems. Now, if they are found towards the tip, those cells can form the root cap. But the same cells, if they form around the edges over here on the sides, they then form the epidermis. So this is the part that gives rise to root hair. Similarly, when you look at the cross section of leaf, uh, the cells are, that are towards the outside form the leaf epidermis and the cells towards the inside form the mesopil. We can conclude that the location of the cells decide the fate of the cells. Where things get interesting is that during each of these stages, the cell retains all the same genes. But then how is it able to move through these different stages? It's because the cell has the capability to turn genes on and off. So meristematic cells or the stem cells are totipotent, meaning they can be made to form any type of cell or do any type of function. By controlling the genes, those are on and off. This is the principle which underlies plant tissue culture. So in a controlled lab condition, parenchyma cells, which are known for de-differentiation, uh, are made to divide and form a bunch of undifferentiated cells called as the callus. And then they develop into the root and shoot of the plant. Can you tell me exactly what are the two processes involved? I'll give you some time. So let's look at what is happening. Parenchyma, which is a differentiated ground tissue cell, now has to become a group of undifferentiated cells. So basically, it's losing its function. So it undergoes de-differentiation. And undifferentiated cells are again regaining function. So here it is re-differentiation. The principle is also used by modern plant biotechnology. So we have some plants like the orchid, which usually only self-fertilizes and sometimes this can lead to inbreeding depression. To overcome that, it's easy to mass produce these plants using these processes. So by using a technique which is called as micropropagation. So what we do is we remove some of the cells of the orchid plant and we grow them in a medium which looks like this and uh, it forms callus. And the callus will then re-differentiate itself into orchid plants. So in this way, it's easy to propagate a plant, which otherwise is very difficult to grow. 